Hi everyone, I'm here with Master Peaches and Lulu today and I thought I'd just have a chat while we sit with them and let you know how our vaccination day went that we had recently. Uh, so what happened is that we get all of the 15 bunnies here health checked and vaccinated and we take them out to the sanctuary that we foster them from, so the Big Ears Sanctuary and a lot of vets and vet nurses um, very generously volunteer their time and their expertise to check all the bunnies over and address any health concerns we have and get them vaccinated for the next six months. So it was a busy day because taking all 15 bunnies in the car at once is a bit of a big thing to do in itself um, and I needed to get a few things organised obviously before the day. So the first thing I needed to do was get their files organised for the fosters. So that has all their you know, health information, age, weights, all that sort of thing recorded in there. So I just collated that into my phone so that I could easily just check any information that the vets would need. So I go over that, you know, a few days beforehand and just get that all ready. And the other thing that I have to get organised is carriers because I needed nine pet carriers to transport all the 15 bunnies um, and really hope that they would all fit in the car at once because I haven't had to take this many bunnies to the sanctuary all at once before. It's the most I've had. So... Uh, once I'd done the files and I started to get the carriers organised, I couldn't do them all because some of them are used as litter boxes by the elder bunnies because they have that nice low front to them so the bunnies can get in and out easily and use them as litter boxes. They work really well for that. So I had to leave some to the last minute, but I got the ones I could organised. Uh, and also picking lots of greens out of the garden, like picking a really big load of them. I made sure I did that the day before so that they could have lots of greens for their tea that night, for their dinner. And then also in the morning, I give them lots of greens before they go to the vet, just because even though the sanctuary is not very far away, it's only 15 minutes from our home, which is great. Um, there's still, you know, the stress of having to wait their turn because it's quite a long, you know, it's, you know, an hour or two, a couple of hours that are at the sanctuary. So that's a long time that they're in their carriers for really, for these guys anyway, they're not used to that. <laughs> um, so I make sure that I give them a big breakfast of lots of greens and grass. Uh, and that way that just makes sure that they're hydrated for any dehydration that happens um, while they're in the carriers and the stress and that sort of thing of, of being handled and being vaccinated. So I make sure I pick enough of that the night before, wash it all up in the bath, uh, because I find that the easiest way to wash their greens. I do that every night anyway, because I need such a large amount for the 15 bunnies that just doing it in the kitchen sink is too hard. So I make sure I have a clean bath and that I wash them in the bath every night. And then I also made sure I picked enough for not only dinner the night before, but also breakfast that morning and also then when they got back from the vaccinations that afternoon so that they could immediately start eating again some tasty things that would help them to just keep their digestion going because the stress and that sort of thing can sometimes make them not want to eat as much in the vaccination. Sometimes it can be a normal um, side effect, I suppose you say, that they can be a little bit quiet afterwards and they don't want to eat as much. So I thought if I have lots of greens ready for them for all those all those um, meals, then they'd probably start eating straight away again, hopefully. So once I had fed them their breakfast, made sure that they'd had plenty to eat uh, and the carriers were all ready to go, then it was time to pack them in and get them going. So I will show you some clips that I've put together from getting them ready and from the vaccination. So I'll show you those now. So that all went really well. They were all very well behaved and obviously the nurses and the vet nurses were wonderful, so um, knowledgeable about rabbits, so generous with their time and all the questions that I had. Um, 
And once we got back home, I just made sure to keep an eye on all the bunnies for the next 24 hours because there can be side effects to the vaccination, just which are common. You know, they can have some swelling or soreness on the side of the vaccine back where the vaccine's put in. They can have loss of appetite, be quite quiet, that sort of thing. So I just kept a good eye on them, but they all seemed really fine and they bounced back pretty much straight away. They took a few, few hours just hiding and you know, recovering, <laughs> but they were eating their greens straight away. And that night I put some really big piles of hay in their pens just to encourage them again to eat something, you know, to get eating. Cause I find if they have big piles of hay, they tend to just be in front of them and they go, oh, there's some hay and they'll snuffle through it and find the nice bits and eat it. So I did that and they were, yeah, they all seemed really well. So I was really lucky that none of them had any adverse reactions. I was thinking, I hope not all of them have adverse reactions. It's nice. I was hoping none of them did, but if some of them did, I was thinking, I hope they don't all have adverse reactions because if I have 15 bunnies that are all not well, that's going to be a lot to handle at one time. But luckily none of them had any issues that I had to worry about, which was fantastic. And pretty much it was straightforward with the health checks when they had the health checks done. So there was a couple that I needed to speak about. One of those was... Um, Anita, who is a little grey bunny that has sort of splayed back legs, so they go out to the side. And that's just happened with her age and her arthritis as she's gotten older. So there's no fix for that. We can't do anything to actually correct that for her, but we need to make sure that she is as comfortable as possible and that we're doing all we can to make sure she re <coughs> retains... Um, make sure she's as comfortable as possible and that she retains as much mobil mobility as she can. Um, so I just wanted to make sure we were doing all we can because her little legs have become a bit more splayed lately. She still gets around wonderfully and she had a health check with a vet only like a couple of weeks before the vaccinations um, and she was really pleased with what good health she was in, obviously apart from the legs, but she's a great weight and she's really healthy and everything, so that's wonderful. And she doesn't seem in any pain, but I was, you know, just wanted to double check there wasn't anything else we can do and it turns out that we're going to try her on a medication called gabapentin, so... She's already on monthly um, mobility injections. She's all, also on daily pain relief. But we're going to add in the gabapentin oral um, medicine and give that to her once a day because that can really help with the mobility and any any re residual pain that's there at the moment as well. So that was Anita that we spoke about. Um, there was also a little lady who is one of the little white lop-eared bunnies that I have here and she's had, had ongoing issues with an ear abscess in one of her the base of one of her ears and we had been trying to give her regular um, penicillin injections rabbits can't have penicillin orally but we'd been trying to do penicillin injections with her and it hadn't really made a difference so I took her back to the vet um, just a little while ago and we put her on a different sort of penicillin injection and this one's really seemed to have made quite a bit of a difference in keeping it from filling back up with the pus and things. So I had that looked at again while we were there and she was really happy with how that had stayed quite flat and hadn't, you know, got more inflamed. So we're going to keep her on those and see how she goes. Again, she's not affected by it, which is fantastic. Like she still eats really well. She doesn't have teeth trouble. Um, she doesn't seem to be in any pain. She's on daily pain relief anyway, but she doesn't seem to be in, in any pain or discomfort from it. So that's really good. So I think it's going to be a long term managing it and keeping it at bay sort of thing for her. It's quite common for lops to get ear abscesses and ear, in, ear issues just with the way their the ear can, can now narrows quite a bit more than the uppity ear bunnies. But we'll do all we can for her to keep her happy and keep it at bay for her. Um, I think they were the main ones. I had Beanie rechecked. I took her to the vet a few weeks ago as well. Um, we spent a lot of time at the vets <laughs> um, because she had developed cherry eye in one of her eyes and one of her teeth, uh, she was having issues with one of her teeth. Um, so we, we already had a strategy plan in place for that and I just got that rechecked and nothing has um, developed further. Everything's staying under control at this stage and so the vet was really happy with that. Um, I wanted to get Jersey checked. He's one of my younger bunnies. He's only, or he'll be two in December, so he's still a real, like two years old in December, so he's still a really young bunny. But I wanted to get him checked because he's developed sore hocks on his feet, which is really odd for such a young bunny who has a, um, appropriate flooring and that sort of thing to develop it. And I was a bit um, clueless as to what was going on. I thought maybe because he did come from, his mum was in a hoarding situation, so it's likely that he's an inbred bunny and his genetics have caused him some issues already with tear duct problems and he's had bunny syphilis just from the inbreeding and 
Um, I thought maybe it was to do with that, but then I figured out <laughs> that it's because he likes to sit on a cat tree that he has in his pen all the time. And the cat tree, um, you know, the base of it, where he sits, is wood with just a little bit of thin carpet over it. So that's really hard on his hocks, even though I've made the rest of his pen really nice and soft and cushiony and appropriate. I hadn't thought about it because I didn't think he'd spend so much time on the cat tree, but he loves it up there. So I, I nutted that out and the vet said, we'll just put some, you know, padding on top of that, which I've done, and that's really starting to help his hocks. So that's good. I'm glad it's an easy fix and not a long-term problem, which is great. Um, and the only other th- um issue that came up was with Master Peaches who I'm here with at the moment with Lulu and he is he's because he's getting older as well and he's a big bunny so a lot of a lot of weight on his joints and he is developing a bit of arthritis so we're going to put him on monthly cartrophin injections to help that and keep him as mobile and pain-free as possible but apart from that the rest were really straightforward everyone was in good health and they all got checked out um and yeah got their toenails looked at and got their their scent glands looked at see if they needed cleaning which I try to keep up with but that sort of thing the ears looked at eyes looked at all the teeth looked at all the good things like that so that was wonderful and we managed to fit them all in the car managed to get them all home again and yeah and I'm so glad they didn't have any adverse reactions so yes I thought I would share that with you and let you know how it all went Um, and I'm planning to do another video soon so thank you so much for watching this one I hope you're all well and sending lots of love and hugs and I will see you in my next one. Bye.